Hey, what is up everyone? Welcome back to a brand new Roblox Studio video. My name is Floppy, and in today's tutorial, we're going to be going over how to make a kill counter or a kill system inside of Roblox Studio. So basically how this is going to work, it is kind of like a kill system. Well, well, it is used as a kill system. How it works is if a player kills another player, then the player that killed the player will receive a leader stat rewarding them for that kill, basically registering each kill they do. So let's say they killed five people all in a row, they would be that specific killer would be given five leader stats because that's the amount of kills they have done inside of the game. Now in today's tutorial we will also be including a data saving script, but we also have an option where you do not necessarily need to have a data saving script. Now if you don't know what data saving scripts are, basically what they are is it's what stores your data. So if you want the player to be able to leave the game and then rejoin and still have the same amount of lead stats, uh, well, uh, mentioning how many kills they've got inside of the game. So let's say I've got five kills, I've played around in the game, and then I leave the game, and I want to rejoin, and then I want to continue from my five um, kills, then you would be including a leader stat. If you wanted the player to play the game and do whatever and get kills, and then leave and then rejoin and then start with zero kills again, then you would not be including a data saving script. So for starters, we want to make sure our explorer and properties are enabled. If our explorer and properties are not enabled, we want to head up to the top bar here, click on view and enable explorer and properties and they should show up somewhere over your screen. We then want to now go and create our main systems. So we're firstly going to be starting with the data saving. So as I just mentioned, it is up to you on what sort of data saving you want. Do you want data saving? Do you not want data saving? So first of all, we're going to be going over the system that does not include data saving. And this is just going to be creating your leader stats and we'll be making that little square or I guess you could say a little area up here that displays the player's stats like coins, whatever. But in this example, we're going to be using kills. So we're going to do the first one without data saving. And this is just displaying how many uh, kills a player has. So we want to head over here to where it says service script service, click on the plus button and insert a script. So now that you've inserted the script inside of your service script service, remember this is option one, this is without any saving. So this is no saving, it is just the leader stats. You then want to go down to the description of this video, copy and paste the code that is in the description. It's going to be called leader stats no saving or option one. You then want to go and copy that, bring it back to Roblox Studio, remove all the previous code and then paste in the new code. Now we do need to go and adjust a couple things here. Now depending on what you want your leader stat to be called, this is where you are going to adjust it. For this tutorial, my leader stat is going to be called kills. But let's say you wanted your um, leader stat to be called slains or, or murders or something. You'd go and change that right here where I've gone and put kills. Now you can go and adjust the local kills, but I mean it's, it's really not necessary. This is the only thing that determines on what that leader stat is actually called. So right now ours is called kills. Let's say you wanted to have it as fish, who knows what. But if you want like to have it murders or really whatever you would like your leader stat to be called, you go and adjust that right there. But we'll leave it as kills. Then basically here, if you are wanting to play uh, a player to start with a certain amount of kills already, let's say five kills when they join into the game, you can go and change that right here to five. But I think for a, um, a combat system or like a, a killing system, you wouldn't give a player kills before they've even joined into the game or even begun killing people in the game. So I would suggest leave this as zero. So I'm going to quickly go over this because this is now our leader stat. So game.players.player added, it creates a function. It then goes local leader sets, identifies our leader stats, instance.new, creates a folder, and then it changes the leader stats, changes the folder's name to leader stats. Then it goes to the leader stat and changes the folder's parent to our player or that specific player who just joined into the game. Then it goes local kills and this basically identifies our value. So instance.new.int value. It then changes the um, int value or our value value's name to kills, which is now kills. It then goes kills.value, changes the value to zero, kills.parent, so our um, our value that is going to go inside of the leader stat. It then goes kills.parent equals leader stats, basically meaning our um, value goes inside of our leader stats. 
So that is if you are just wanting it with no saving. Now you're probably wondering, okay, let's, uh, I'm wanting the data to save when a player goes and leaves. So what you want to do, you want to head down to the description of this video. You then want to go and remove all the previous code. And then you want to go and copy option two. We're also going to be called uh, saving data store. I guess I'll, I'll probably name it something like that. You want to bring that back to Roblox Studio, remove all the previous code and then paste in the new code. Now, as you can see, this is a much more larger and complex script simply because we are handling data. Now, let's say you already have followed one of my previous tutorials, which include a data store. Usually on default, my data store names are set to one. But let's say you are, for example, using a coin data store that I mentioned in a, uh, a previous video that you previously watched. You want to go and make sure that those data store names are not the same. So data store names, this one here is called one same as every single other data store which I've used on my YouTube channel. So you want to go and change, let's say let's say you have the coin data store inside of your game, you want to go and change either one of those. So you could either go change coin um, the, the coin data store or the kills data store. So you want to make sure that they're not the same. So let's say I have a coins data store, my coins data store is called one and the, the name for the data store is right here. Our data store is called one. You then go and change this to two because they cannot be the same or it's going to muck up the script and the data saving and all the loading up the, the stats and all the loading up the data. It's just going to muck it up. So make sure that you don't have two of the same named data stores. So I'm not going to go over all of this code right here, but this basically just controls the data. I've gone and added notes on the areas that you need to go and change. So depending on what you went and named your currency, remember our one was called kills. So we've got it in here for default kills. But let's say you went and changed your leader stat to murders. You'd then go and change this to murders. Just make sure that everything that says previously kills you would go and change. You only really need to change the green and the blue ones. You do not need to change any other um, of the of the gray ones or any of the red ones or whatever there is. You don't need to change any of those. Only the green kills and the blue kills right there. And you can see where all the kills are when you go and click on it, but you can see that's a gray kill where this is a blue kill. So here's all the blue kills. You can see there's a blue kill, there's a blue kill. Um, and that's all the blue kill kills. So it's just this one, this one, and then your kills up there, and obviously this one right here. So that is now controlling our data. For this tutorial, we will be in, we will be implementing. Uh, well, we will be saving the player data when they go and do this, simply because this is what we're going to be using for the tutorial. So we're going to be using the data store here for the tutorial. So I'm going to head up here, click on X next to our script up here and now this has gone and saved our data saving script and that is all we need to do regarding our currency or our leader stats and our data we then want to head over here to server script service again click on the plus button and insert another script so now that you've inserted another script inside of service script service you want to go down to the description of this video copy and paste the code that's in the description bring it back to roblox studio it's going to be called script 2 it's going to be called uh, second service script service script you want to go and remove all the previous code well, copy obviously the code, bring it back to Roblox Studio, remove all the previous code, and then paste in the new code. Now, this is quite straightforward, um, so I'm just going to quickly go over it here. The only thing that you really need to change if you've gone and changed your uh, leader stats or your currency name is right here. Where it says kills, you go and change that to, for example, murders. Now, I'm going to quickly go over the code here just so you can kind of get a bit of a better idea on what is actually going on. Game.players.players added. So when a player is added into the game, it then creates a function and then that calls it player. So that is the player function. Player.character added, it creates another function. Local humanoid equals player.character wait for child humanoid. This is identifying our humanoid where basically it adjusts our health, it does events, etc. You can really adjust the walk speed. Everything that is inside of your Roblox character is adjusted through your humanoid. Humanoid dot died. So when the humanoid has died, it then creates a function. So humanoid died, it then goes and creates a function. Local damage dealer equals humanoid find first child creator. Now this is going to be our damage dealer. What is basically dealing the damage? I guess you could say the, um, I guess you could get kind of call them the, the murderer in a way, but this is the person that is going to be dealing the damage. So humanoid find first child creator. You don't want to go and change this right here. You want to leave that this line just how it is. If damage dealer and damage dealer dot value then so basically what happens here if damage dealer is there so if the damage dealer is identified in the humanoid and damage dealer dot value if the damage dealer value is there also then it goes and identifies our killer so our local killer equals game dot players 
findfirstchild.damagedealer.value.name and that is our killer for that player. So for example, if I had to go and kill someone inside of the Roblox game, I would then be classed as the killer. So if killer and killer.leader stats then, so if killer, if our killer is identified up here, and leader stats then, or our killer.leader stats then, local kills equals killer.leader stats, find first child kills. And now basically this is, I guess you could say, where it's going to find the leader stats. So it, it, our leader stats, so remember, I am the killer here, for example. I've just gone and killed John Doe inside of Roblox. I am the local killer, so if killer and killer.leader stats, so if I have leader stats, then it identifies our local kills, which is local kills equals killer.leader stats find first child, because we're going into my player now, going to our leader stats and then finding the, um, I guess you could say the value inside of our leader stats called kills. If kills, then kills.value equals kills.value or zero plus one. So that is increasing our kills leader stat by one every single time I kill another player. So if you are wanting a player to receive two kills when they go and kill a player, you then go and set that like that. But what's also quite cool is you can use this in a variety of different ways. It doesn't necessarily have to be measuring kills. It could even be measuring currency. So you could go and change all the leader stat and all the names to coins and make this add five coins onto your, um, into your leader stats if you actually go and kill a player inside of the game. So this can be used in a variety of different ways. It doesn't necessarily have to be based around coins. That's uh, uh, about around kills. So that's why I've gone and left that one there simply because so you can go and adjust it to however you would like. But if you're using murders or kills, you'd go and keep that as one because when you kill someone, you're not killing five people at once. You're killing a single singular person. So that is where you can adjust it. And that is pretty much the script. So. Just to go over it again, we join in, identifies our humanoid, our local damage dealer, then if damage dealer, then it identifies our killer, which is myself. If I've gone and killed someone, or if someone's killed me, then they are the killer. Then if killer, leader stats, and this basically adds the value to our kills leader stats. So once you've gone and made all the adjustments and you've got a bit of an understanding of the code, you want to head up here, click on the X button next to your script. So now that you've completed the scripts and you're pretty confident with what you've got and you've changed everything that's needing to be changed, we now want to go and insert the tool that is actually going to be dealing the damage. So you may have your own custom tool, which you've followed a tutorial from my YouTube channel previously, and you've already got your tool sorted. Or if you're kind of just like, you know, going along with the flow and you don't have a sword yet and you want to make sure that the system works, you then can just go and use a free modeled one because I mean it doesn't really matter too much and that is what we're going to be, to be doing in today's tutorial. So I'm going to head over here to the toolbox here in our home bar and now I'm going to search up a sword. So if I go uh, do a sword here, we'll find the official Roblox one right there by Roblox. I'm going to click on that one and yes we're going to allow the scripts and then do we want this in starter pack? So basically what your starter pack is is what the player joins into the game with. So the sword is not given um, the, the sword is given straight away. They do not need to do anything to earn that sword. When they join in, they will be given that sword straight away. So for this tutorial, yes, this tool is gonna is gonna be in our starter pack. So I'm gonna click yes, and now that has gone and given it in, or put in it into our starter pack. So when we go and join in now, we will be given a sword, and then if another player does damage, or I do damage to another player, I or them are given a leader stat. So once you've gone and inserted your tool that is actually going to be dealing the damage and actually going to be harming another player, what you want to do, you now want to go and test it out. So you could either go to your main Roblox page and go file, publish to Roblox, or you could go and do team test. You could even go to the top bar here and click and test. But uh, keep in mind, because due to the leader stat, or sorry, due to the data saving, this um, local server testing doesn't always necessarily work. So if you go and try that from my testing parts of it, if you go and try that, it will most of the time kick you out of it, simply because it hasn't loaded your data successfully. So the best way to go and test this out is either in team test over here, and you get another player to join in, or you get an old account to join in, or you go to the main Roblox page and you ask one of your Roblox friends to join and to test it out with you. 
We are now in the base plate and as you guys can see I've got my Roblox character and then I've also got a Roblox friend here that is helping us test out the system and um, basically now what is going to happen I've got a sword in my inventory so I can go and equip the sword and then the sword will be shown in my hand and I've currently got zero kills because I have not killed any other character or any other player inside of the game yet so if I go and kill Ali over here or Ali as you guys can see I've now received one kill leader stat now the exact same thing will happen here is if he goes and uses the sword here and then slices me up and kills me, you're able to see he is then given one leader stat also. Now, remember, we involved and we added a data saving script into this. So if we had to go and leave, then then there's going to be no leader stats when we join back. But as you guys can see, it is going to continue stack no matter what and no matter the amount of times we kill a player, it is going to continuously stack onto our leader stats. So let's go test out this data saving script. So let's go and leave this game and let's join back. So we have now joined back into the base plate and we have still got our two leader stats. And I mean, nothing else has really happened now since our data hasn't gone anywhere. And as you guys can see, the, if we con con continue to kill our players here, you're able to see we still increase on our leader stats. This basically shows that our data store does work. If you guys are a little bit lost or you do need a little bit more of assistance on creating the system inside of your Roblox game, please feel free to reach out to us on our Discord server and we can happily help you out. But anyway guys, I'm going to wrap up the video here. If you did enjoy, I'd appreciate if you do consider subscribing to the channel, turning on the notification bell so you never miss another upload. And if you did like today's video, please do make sure to consider liking it as well. But anyway, have an amazing rest of your day and I'll see everyone in the next Roblox Studio video.